Okay, Matt. I do believe you're up now. Yes, sir. Um, next item on your agenda is a plan development request on Crown Real Estate Development. This is the same property that you may recall seeing a couple months ago. That was a rezoning case to the down zone, a large portion of it from CH to CC, and up so the eastern boundary of it uh, from RM to CC. Um, at that point in time, when we were talking about the rezoning, we said that the applicant was intending to perhaps come through with a plan development request for a mixed use development, and they are now here. Um, so they're proposing a mixed use development of commercial. Uh, various types as well as multifamily, um, all based on a master plan. Um, in your packet on the first page is a chart that lists the various buildings. You can go on to the master plan here. Um, it's an arrangement of five different buildings. These are multi story um, that would have ground floor retail. Um, and by retail, it could be commercial retail or offices or even restaurants, um, and then residential units above. Um, the building in the back um, is a parking deck um, that would accommodate you know, the, the latter phases of development. I believe they're contemplating three phases you know, to start with the uh, front part of the property and work their way right back, utilize surface parking exclusively at first, and then eventually build the parking deck with the last building. Um, parking demands um, total about high. The total is about 140 dwelling units and about 45,000 square feet of commercial space. Uh, the property is large enough that if it were, uh, if it were developed conventionally under CC zoning, it probably could contain more than that. Um, but with the mixture, we have a mixture of parking demands. Um, one per bedroom for multifamily and four and a half spaces per thousand square feet of gross floor area uh, for general commercial uh, retail. Restaurants would by themselves would handle or require more than that, uh, but as part of the overall commercial development, we consider it the same as a shopping center. Um, any use wise, this area, of course, with the zoning, you have commercial area and zoning to the south, residential zones to the north, or I 75 nearly to the west. Future development map shows this is community activity center, um, and then regional activity center to the south, which is our more intensive category. Um, this is a mixture of uses that the property currently is surrounded by, multi-family and residential to the north, commercial to the south. They are the mixture in the middle. Aerial, this is from several years ago. This is before the Grove Apartments was built to the north, before the brewery and development really got started um, to the south. Subject property, you can see is vacant. That is the Grove Apartments there in the background. And this is the side view looking from the Bay Tree Road along the interstate, and then of course the interstate itself, the Grove Apartments. This is a small apartment complex that's along Bay Tree Road immediately to the east of the subject property. And of course our master plan, some photos that they have given us. Um, this is a development that was constructed in Tallahassee. This has been one of their inspirations, uh, with ground floor retail and uh, sort of an urban or new urbanism type feel. Um, with a series of different buildings along the streets. Um, they give this not to show what the buildings will look like, but just as examples of what it might look like. Um, and this is that same development. A little bit further along was the first part of the And it's been a very successful development down in Tallahassee. in it's called College Town. Um, there's some of the other buildings. And I think the applicants have some display boards as part of their presentation to you. Um, and these spies, of course, the zoning issue was discussed back at the time of rezoning. Um, there are standards for plan development, review, and approval in the packet. Um, staff is finding them consistent with those criteria. I'm recommending approval to you with nine different conditions, which are here in your packet. You can go through those if you would like. Um, we will spend through a lot of this in the work session. But the first condition is to put a cap um, to describe the development of the cap square footage for the commercial space. Um, it's a little higher than what is currently being proposed, but just to allow the applicant a little bit of flexibility. Number two is the, the cap of 150 dwelling units. Um, number three is to limit the height of the building so none of them will exceed five floors and then maintain at least a 40-foot setback of the property lines. Number four talks about driveway entrances from Bay Tree Road, uh, but to limit to no more than two from each segment of Bay Tree. And then also to connect the property for pedestrian access um, with the neighboring 
departments to the north, and also Petrie Road to the south. Uh, parking areas, this is overall formula, so as they build each phase of development, there's enough parking provided, so it's commensurate with the amount of development <coughs> being built. Um, signage is to follow the CC standards. And buffer yard, the only one that is required is along the eastern boundary where it abuts um, the RM and the R10 zoning. RP and R10 zoning. And the recommendation here, as in condition number seven, is to increase the amount of vegetation on that with the wall um, in place. But it is the buffer yard equivalent um, as if this property was still zoned CH. Um, so, with the height of the buildings that are there, just a little more vegetation and for the added trees to be evergreen. Um, and finally, in number nine is the expiration date of five years give the applicants some time to start organizing and building the development. Um, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions to staff? Where's the main entrance to the main entrance? The main entrance is off Bay Tree, and it would theoretically line up with a future entrance uh, that would go into the north side of the Drury development. Some of you may recall years ago when Drury was coming through, um, we think we got a lot of variances. But there's that internal road that binds all the garden from the Drury Inn. Their master plan is in the requirement for variances and we to extend that road eventually to Bay Tree. So the final alignment of that would determine what else gets built on the Drury property. But with this development, if they get in the first, it sort of sets the mark on Bay Tree as to where that future intersection would be. So the building to the north of this, which what, what development? The apartments to the north is the is Grove Apartments. The the Correct. Now this is the Grove. Uh, this is the side that faces the interstate. This is the west side. Again, this is the apartment to their north. This is looking across the subject property, looking north from near Bay Tree Road. And that's the Grove mm -hmm. Apartments in the distance. The parking, the large parking lot in the north end of this property would be adjacent, adjacent to their, to actually the Groves parking lot, their buildings on the other side. Um, in terms of like, even from their perspective, the customer base, Grove has 216 apartments um, of their own, mm -hmm. and so what they're proposing is to increase that by two thirds, um, which the idea, particularly with the parking demand, is to think that a lot of the Residents, both on site and adjacent, throw the walking distance to the amenities of the commercial development. Was, was one of the conditions you mentioned in the plan that the parking lot would be adjacent to the north? Correct. If you look at their master plan, there is no pedestrian connection at all to the north. Mm -hmm. Um, and the proposal here is to connect them at some point, at least stud it out. Um, of course, it requires talking to the neighbor, but at least allow residents from the road to access this site. Is that just a pedestrian connection? Pedestrian of it, yeah, not to link the parking lots, but it's connected to the pedestrian. So they don't have to walk down Bay Road on the side, just to give them more convenient access to this site. Um, and then Bay Tree, they're going to have to put uh, pedestrian walkways along Bay Tree Road as sidewalks, and the, the condition we're requiring to connect the site from internally to the site to the sidewalk. And then eventually, that new intersection would be a crosswalk that would then have a pedestrian connection to the brewery development to the south, once the brewery development to the south builds. Any other questions for I'd like to welcome up anyone that would like to speak in favor of this request. Anyone that would like to speak in favor of this request. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is uh, Jimmy Cohn. My address is 18 and 6 Plum Street. I'm the uh, architect of this project. With me is Matt King, he's a developer, and we also have our site engineer who is also here. We're glad to answer any questions. We brought some additional 
Both those and some posters. Uh, I think you've got some of these already in your packets. If you have any questions, you'd be glad to answer those. I think that everything has been gone over pretty thoroughly. Okay. So. Anybody have any questions? What is that? The board with the elevations. Can you can you raise that up a little bit? If you don't mind. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to see what that one story building there was. So that's the restaurant. Which is which? Which building on the on the master Or something similar to. You know, I mean, on the, on the master building number four. So this is looking to building four one and the parking garages, which is not visible. Okay. Now this will have a second story above here. Okay. So overall, any other questions? <clears throat> yes. Do you have any concerns with the nine conditions that were recommended by staff? No, sir, just the uh, one condition on the pedestrian walkway, um, getting with the grove and their under, just, you know, you can't control that. The southern out, like Matt has said, we have no, no problems with whatsoever. Any other questions? Thank y'all very much Thank for your time. Anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please state your name and address for the record, sir. My name is Bob Raffio, 2207 Lakeshore Drive, which is adjacent to the property in question. I'm not really for or against it because I don't really know that much. I do have a question. What is the, I must have missed it, what is the height restriction on the buildings and on the parking garage? Five story maximum is yes. what we're requesting. I thought, it was, I thought it was 35 feet. 35 feet is, you can have 35 feet tall right up to the building setback line. Uh, in commercial zoning, if you go over 35 feet, then you start increasing the setback. Oh. Well, I was just concerned because of the adjacent. It's fairly adjacent to the residential area, so I'm concerned about the uh, Correct. Area. And in this zoning district, the building setback for the sideline um, toward the neighborhood is actually zero feet, and they're proposing 41 feet, I think. Okay, I was just curious. Thank you. But we didn't want 20 stories right there, so they're proposing five, so that was the height limit. Thank you, sir. Anyone else would like to speak in favor of this request? You're hearing none. I would turn it over to anyone that would like to speak against this request. Anyone here would like to speak against this request? Please come up, ma'am. My name is Kate Tiffany. I'm from 513 Buena Vista Circle. I'm not necessarily against this request. But I have some concerns. When jewelry in hotel is being built, I don't know what questions were or were not asked. But since that hotel has been built, we have had all their debris, sludge, come into Lake Sherry Estate. I gather there's a lawsuit going on now as to who is responsible for clearing all that up. I just have concerns that we don't find the same issue again with this proposed site being so close to um, Lake Sherry Estates. And I don't know whether anybody's thought about that, but we have a problem right now. Um, so, what I can tell you is because of the experience with Drury yeah. and their erosion problems that they yeah. had, um, city engineer considers this area mm -hmm. as a hot spot. Mm -hmm. So any development that occurs here, proposed development, gets extra scrutiny in terms of its impacts on the surroundings. This site is, doesn't have quite the slope that the Drury site has, mm -hmm. so I don't think the erosion potential is there, but with the buffering and everything they're going to have to comply with, it's going to be looked at very carefully. Right, and I'm not sure whether it was an erosion issue 
for the case of we weren't take, they were not taking care of removing their waste. Just let it sit there and then go into the lab. Right, and the, I remember from the Drury side it was just bare dirt for a long time. There was a temporary ponds right. that got relocated. It's not acceptable. And it had some issues. Major issues, which we're still dealing with now because nobody wants to take responsibility. So I would like that addressed. Any other questions for the lady? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Anyone else that would like to speak against this request? Anyone else that would like to speak against this request? I'll turn it over to the commission if they have any questions for staff. Just a clarification, actually, if I may, please. Please. Uh, the future development map. The, the parcel between Buena Vista Circle and this crop is blue. What does what does the blue 